The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with you. you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome everyone this morning as we gather here on the 7th Sunday after Pentecost, the 6th Sunday after Trinity, depending on which way you do your uh, calendar counting. It's wonderful to have you here as we come to the second last Sunday in July. Second last in July. There's something wrong with that. There's no way we're almost halfway through summer. Uh, but welcome this morning as we gather and offer prayer and praise. We got everything, everybody back in the house again today after a couple of weeks of changes and shifts and so on. Uh, joining me here in the studio this morning is Reverend Robert Clifford from All Saints Anglican Church, downtown Windsor. Reverend Charlotte Malla from St. James Roseland, also here in Windsor. And I am Paul Poulton. I'm the rector of St. Augustine of Canterbury and also the chaplain to the Scent, the online gathered communities that gather here uh, online in our Facebook and YouTube world. It's great to have you here this morning. If you haven't already done so, the link to the bulletin is in the description of the video or hopefully you've already downloaded it from the deployment docs uh, that was sent out later yesterday afternoon. It's great to have you all here. We look forward to sharing with you in worship. There is one change that we're going to make to worship, and we'll let you know when we get closer to it. The offertory hymn on your hymn sheet is actually the closing hymn on your hymn sheet, and the closing hymn on your hymn sheet is the offertory hymn, but there are actually different words for the closing hymn, so you're just going to have to watch the screens. But we'll get to that when we get closer to it, for now. Won't you join us as we gather for worship this morning, starting off with our opening hymn number five in your Common Praise Hymnal, if you happen to have one of those kicking around. Otherwise, on your hymn sheet or on your screen, Christ whose glory fills the skies. of the glory of God. Yet God promises to pour out grace upon us, giving us confidence to show ourselves as we are and be freed from shame. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear this good news. When you were buried with Christ in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God. 
By that power, we are made clean and set free to live in gratitude with and gratitude and love with zeal. As you have received Christ Jesus, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and abounding in thanksgiving. Thanks. Amen. Amen. My dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Join in our act of praise today, hymn number 505 in the Comet Praise Hymnal, on screen or on your song sheet, Be Thou My Vision. Son taught us always on our lips, help us so to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, and so to knock that the door of mercy may be opened for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of wisdom, you promise to give your spirit to those who ask. Overwhelm us with your word that we may know you more fully, love you more passionately, and follow you more closely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go take for yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Dibliam, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Loruamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have the, I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow, or by sword, or by war, or by horses, or by horsemen. When she had weaned her, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Loami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. 
Yet the number of people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> share with you a reading of Psalm 85. I would invite you to join me in the refrain, Show us your mercy. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the, restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from wrathful indignation. Show, Show us your, your mercy. mercy. Restore us then, O God our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show, Show us your, your mercy. mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show, Show us, us your, your mercy. mercy. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Show, Show us your, your mercy. mercy. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. R righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Show us your mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The second reading comes to us from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole, faithful, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with all its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to a cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink, or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Join us in our gradual hymn, hymn number 458 in your Common Praise hymnal, on screen or on your song sheet, Seek Ye First. <laughs>
our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give, give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and you say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give, and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will give up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For anyone, for everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give them a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Amen. So just, I know you're at home and I won't be able to see you raise your hand, but just uh, raise your hand if you pray, even occasionally. Raise your hand. In the studio, they're raising their hands. They're, they're all paid to pray. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say, though, that, that if you are here participating in the worship of God today, you can raise your hand. And be assured that we will indeed pray as Christ has taught us. Perhaps the more important question, though, is how many of us are satisfied with our own devotional and prayer life? Keep your hand up if you are. I know mine's not up, so don't worry if that's the case for you, too. To those of you who may still have your hand up at home, uh, they've all been lowered in the studio, so I don't know how to address them, but um, please feel free to turn to whatever your preferred sermon distraction is. Um, my personal favorites um, are at the back of the Little Red Book of Common Prayer, beginning around page 695. That will keep you occupied for the entire length of most any sermon, so uh, it will also cause you to deep to think deeply about things, um, so it's worth the time if you are entirely satisfied with your own devotional and prayer life. For the rest of us who remain dissatisfied with our prayerfulness, myself included, I offer a few thoughts on what we've just heard. We have today Jesus' instructions for prayer to God, and they are, we're told, for what is needed not what is wanted. Jesus framed his sample prayer in five petitions which all ask for some small thing from God. It would seem if we're to follow the example, God doesn't really desire to hear about our desire for bigger houses or private jets or a new job or probably more especially, and this may be my own bias, any of our favorite sports teams. The first thing... <laughs> Not true. Not true. God doesn't want to hear about our sports teams. Um, 
the first thing Jesus invites his followers, including us, to pray for is God's intimacy. Father, we're encouraged to call God. Despite whatever our relationship to our earthly father was or is, fair, middling, fantastic, non-existent, we are called to pray for a relationship with a heavenly father which is ideal and perfect, as only the things of God can be perfect. Some of us have troubled or troubling relationships with our fathers here on earth. This part of the prayer, for me anyways, holds a special place in my heart. Imper imperfection, I pray, can be replaced by perfection. And then Jesus bids us pray for God's kingdom. Your kingdom come, we say. Our prayer is for God's kingdom of justice and of peace and of love and of equity and unity to exist among us here in this life and for us to be included in it. We're encouraged to pray for God to draw us intimately into God's very presence while we're here in this world and not just wait for our eternal unity with God. Also, we're asked to pray for the small practical things we need to survive in this life. Give us each day our daily bread, we pray. Not enough to store away in hordes, not enough to threaten shortage for anyone else, certainly not for a new house or a job or a car or a fattened bank account, just enough to meet today's need. And Jesus bids us to persist in praying for forgiveness, but sneakily also assumes that we are actively already forgiving others. St. Paul wrote to the Colossians, as we just also heard today, when you were dead in trespasses, or sins in some translations, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, which would be a violation of Jewish law that would make you un-Jewish. God made, uh, made you alive together with him, with God. And then when he forgave us all of our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set it all aside and nailed it to a cross. So even those of us who are mired in sin and living outside the law. We are forgiven all our trespasses, without exception, every single one. Even that one that just flashed behind your eyes, that one too. You are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven, period. And then finally, Jesus invites us to pray for deliverance. So do not bring us to the time of trial, he prayed. Or spare us, good Lord, as the great litany phrases that petition. So this is what Jesus instructs. The fact is, God is not, not, I'll repeat, not, our personal magic genie. We're not promised anywhere in scripture or in our own experience that this life will be easy. We are, however, promised that God will hear us when we pray. This next bit I offer only as one way that has worked for me. Whenever I felt discouraged in my own prayer life, it is the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, which brings me back to prayer. I try and often fail to start and end my day with this prayer. I pray for 
many people by name with great regularity. I pray for some of your specific life circumstances and tribulations, if I know them. I pray for your joys and successes when I know those too. I like to hear those. I pray for your families. I pray for your health. And when I inevitably slip, it is the Lord's Prayer that restores me to pray. So some homework, if you'll allow me. Examine your prayer life. Because no part of our lives should be excluded from self-examination. Are you satisfied with your devotions? Even if you are, is there something more or different that could be done? The answer there is yes that you're satisfied and no that there's not much else you could do then stick with it because it's working for you and as Jesus invited pray with him the prayer that he offered to us if you're not satisfied and yes there's something else that could be done then start with the Lord's Prayer do it daily start with this week. Commit to prayer. Because the thing is, persistent prayer leads to the promised Holy Spirit, and she's always active in the world. She is in all of us. She is what animates us to do the will of God. As much as when we pray, we have the hope of changing God Prayer more immediately, and most immediately, has the power to change us. Because when we pray for the kingdom, we can't, upon seeing our oneness in Christ, work to exclude others from the kingdom. When we pray for peace, we can't, in good conscience, militate for aggressive conflict in the world or in our own lives or in our parishes or in our families and when we pray for our daily bread we cannot upon discovering our vast abundance deny bread to others and when we pray for forgiveness we can't, upon realizing that Christ carries our sins to the cross of Calvary, deny our forgiveness to others. And when we pray to be spared from the time of trial or delivered from evil, depending which translation, we can't, can't in faithfulness, condemn others to a time of trial and to suffer in evil. So let's start now. Let's pray. Let's use the one that we're more accustomed to, to using, but let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us confess our faith. As together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God knows us better than we know ourselves. Relying on the Spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to God of mercy with hear our prayer. For your whole hurting, hating world. Lead us in the ways of peace, <clears throat> especially in places where tyrants reign and people eat the bread of conflict every day. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For your church, whose body is strong in some places and frail in others. Nourish your church in the world, O Lord, that those who are flourishing might proclaim your word with power, and those who are weak might be strengthened to do your work. God of mercy, hear, hear our prayer. For your earth that suffers at the hands of your own people, Pour out your healing mercy on this planet you have made, and prod us to be worthy stewards of its beauty and its gifts, <clears throat> that in honoring the earth, we may also honor you. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. For those who suffer because of disease or injury, the addicted, the abused, the feeble, and the ill, Soothe our suffering and heal our wounds. Protect us from evil and calm our anxious hearts. Make us whole in you. God of mercy, hear, hear our prayer. For those who are dying and the ones who care for them. Receive them into the arms of mercy and welcome them into the company of the saints in light. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. For those whose burdens we carry in our hearts, and those known to you, bestow your good gifts as you see fit, supplying every need by the power of your spirit. Accept all these prayers we offer in faith, even as you continue to teach us to pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we wait for the coming of God's good reign, we answer the invitation to take part in God's good work, bringing our tithes and offerings with joyful gratitude. I invite you to prayerfully consider how it is that you can uh, contribute to the ministry of the Sent, the ministry that you are participating in right now. I also invite you to, or encourage you to consider um, how you can continue to support uh, the ongoing ministry, the vital ministries of your home parish, uh, even as you are joining from away. Um, all of those ministries are ongoing, uh, restarting, uh, revisioning the way that they do things uh, for these uh, sort of post-ish COVID times. Um, but those ministries, those vital ministries continue. So uh, please do continue to support them uh, as you are able. And while you do that, I invite you to uh, join in uh, turning to the end of your song sheet. <laughs> um, uh, probably just pay attention to the screen. Uh, uh, Jesus lives thy terrors now.
pray. God of grace, accept all we offer you this day as we look toward the glory you have promised. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Well, a pretty brief set of announcements this morning as we are deep in the middle of summertime, which means not a whole lot going on in church world other than gathering for worship on Sundays uh, and being constant in prayer with each other over the course of the week. Uh, we just, uh, a couple of folks that I neglected to mention at the introduction, uh, sitting behind the computer as usual is Chris. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Uh, and Jonathan, of course, behind the keyboard. So thank you to both of you uh, for being present with us. The next couple of weeks are going to be different as a couple of the rectors are off on vacation time again. Uh, so you'll have to watch for the deployment docs email uh, next week. Uh, you'll probably see it Saturday morning. Um, and it will have the YouTube link. So our worship will be pre-recorded, uh, but released on Sunday mornings at 11.30. So just watch for that for the next couple of weeks. Uh, and we'll be back to join you again the second week of August when we uh, uh, gather together as a, as a crew again uh, to be able to offer our online worship. So we'll still be around. We're just going to be a recorded version of us. Uh, thanks to all of you who have followed along, even on those recorded versions. We do check to see if you're watching. You know that, right? <laughs> all right, just making sure everybody's aware. Um, yeah, so beyond that, uh, All Saints has got a chicken dinner coming up in September. We've got Bible studies and book studies coming up starting in September. Uh, there's activities going on all around the neighborhood and the community. Uh, please uh, hold all of the, uh, the proud Anglicans of Huron in particular uh, as they're marching with our bishop in the Pride Parade in London this afternoon. Uh, so hold all of those folks in your prayers. Uh, pray for our indigenous communities this week as they uh, journey with Pope Francis, uh, of our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, uh, as he uh, comes to share some words of reconciliation with their community. Uh, pray for all of those who are still hurting. Pray for all of those who are hoping to hear words of, of comfort this week. Uh, for whatever may happen, pray for all of the bishops of the Anglican Communion who are gathering at Lambeth Palace this week. It's, Lots of things to pray for. Good thing Jesus taught us how. Good thing Reverend Robert shared that sermon with us to remind us that, yes, in fact, we do know how to pray. So let's do those praying things. Uh, for now, Reverend Robert, won't you uh, bless us on our way as we... Uh, oh, just a, just a head... Sorry. For a sorry. Might want to add oh. that in. Uh, we pray for the Canadian volunteer in Ukraine, Ernie... Emily. Sorry. Emily Antoine Royce-Royce. Soros? Sirwa? who died in service to freedom on July 18th. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, we certainly pray for those uh, that have been affected by that war in Ukraine. Uh, just a reminder that the closing hymn, watch the screens. Don't even try your hymn, your hymn sheet. It's not going to help you out. Just watch the screens for the closing hymn. Uh, Reverend Robert, won't you send us on our way? All right. May the grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Go in peace, confident in the promises of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.